In our recent video, in our video series, Demystifying 5G, I introduced to you our portable solution to measure 5G in our network coverage indoors to do walk testing. And uh, now, before we put it into an actual demonstration, I would like to recap on what 5G in our signal components we perform measurements to determine network coverage. And that are the so-called synchronization signal blocks. So let's take a look. So as you can see here in the standard, the concept of synchronization signal blocks uh, was introduced. Um, if you see here in the top right corner, um, the synchronization signal block itself occupies four of the M symbols in the time domain and occupies 240 subcarriers, or in other words, 20 resource blocks in the frequency domain. You can see here that we have with the uh, PSS and with the SSS, uh, we determine the cell ID. And with the physical broadcast channel, we can transmit the master information block that has certain important network and system parameters in, inside of it that the mobile needs to further connect to the network. Since uh, 5GNR supports different frequency ranges, FR1 and FR2, so the so-called sub-6 and millimeter wave frequency ranges, we can see here that our synchronization signal blocks can utilize different subcarrier spacings. And basically that determines on how many SSB index, in other words, beams we have available. That's basically dependent on the deployment frequency range. So you see here uh, below three gigahertz, it's up to four. Between three and six, we have eight. And beyond six gigahertz, so in the millimeter wave frequency range, we could have up to 64 of these um, SSBs being transmitted. So a question that we typically get in that case is, um, how can we uniquely identify up to eight of these SSB indices, um, in particular for the frequency range one? Well, that is simply based on the PBCH DMRS, so the demodulation reference signals, that is embedded into the PBCH symbols. And with each of these three symbols, the DMRS sequence is initialized differently, so I have three opportunities and then I can code eight of these SSB indices uh, for FR1. The question is now, what is for FR2? Because as we pointed out earlier, that's up to 64 different indices possible. So for that, uh, to determine that, we need basically now also channel decoding capabilities within our network scanner. Um, otherwise, you would not be able to determine uh, the SSB indices. And for that, uh, we need to decode the master information block that you can see here. And we're actually looking for certain information within that block, the so-called PBCH payload bits. In these PBCH payload bits, they are used differently dependent on the frequency range. And if we look at um, uh, the situation for FR2, so for the millimeter wave, then we see here that we have three bits in addition to the three bits that we get from the different DMRS sequences for the PBCH from these three different symbols. I marked it here again for you. Um, we have six bits in total, and with these six bits in total, we can now uniquely identify up to 64 SSB indices in the millimeter wave frequency range. The question is now, are all of these indices, independent of the frequency range, always transmitted? And the answer to that is basically, no, it's not. This is highly dependent on the design of the particular antenna array that's being used. So it's basically highly dependent on the infrastructure supplier, how many of these SSB indices is in reality in a real network deployment actually being transmitted. So I wanna use here an, an, an example to illustrate that. And we will use this example then also in our demonstration uh, to measure actually coverage at the FR2 frequency of 28 gigahertz. So let's take a look again. So our goal is here basically, or the goal is in general, for the GNODE-B, for the 5G base station, um, to provide coverage into the cell. Uh, the example that I would like to use is basically um, transmitting 20 SSB indices out of the 64 possible ones. Um, what I'm going to do in that demonstration, I'm using the SMW200A vector signal generator. You see here uh, a time plane where I generated a signal. 
And uh, within that time plan, I took a snapshot here of the two subframes uh, as an example. I'm transmitting now different SSB indices. So the very first one, um, for instance, you see here, is the SSB indice zero. So with my uh, uh, antenna array, I can now apply analog beamforming, set the phase shifters and magnitude uh, accordingly so that my SSB index number zero is actually transmitted into the spatial direction that I'm trying to illustrate here. The next SSB index is then um, covering a different area of the radio cell, as you can see. And if I go on uh, with that, I can use my array basically to um, um, show different SSB indexes uh, here covering different areas of my radio cell. And uh, this is now 20 of them. So you basically can see now uh, how this might be mapped into reality. Different SSB indices are used to uh, cover different parts of that radio cell. So now with a coverage measurement solution, like the one that I introduced from Rodin Schwartz, you would be now able to determine which SSB indice is basically covering which part of the radio cell. And that's a very important measurement to determine 5G in our coverage of my network. And we will simulate such a use case in a demonstration video, but this is another video in our video series, Demystifying 5G.